I'm Jake Turner coming up. The director of Zombieland enlists the help of an all-star cast to take down 1940s gangster Mickey Cohen. Josh Brolin and Ryan Gosling go rogue and become a gangster squad. My review right now. You are one, two, three, two, three, 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 now comes a true story inspired on the hunt for 1940s gangster Mickey Cohen. It's fun, well acted, but completely forgettable. It's 1949 in Los Angeles where Cohen has been turning the city into his own. However, Sergeant John O'Mara is one of the few that still believes he can take him down. Who better to play this gruff badass than Josh Brolin, who has a versatile resume of good and evil. And he delivers the goods with ass kicking and strong leadership. Sergeant Jerry Sellers is suave, smooth, and knows that with that badge, it only makes it easier for him to bed women. But he also has the same goal by taking down Cohen. Sellers is played by Ryan Gosling, who has the look, the feel of a cop. But why does his voice sound like it's on helium? <clears throat> Chief Parker, played with Gruff by Nick Nolte, tells him to go off the books and form a squad to do what's necessary to take down the ex-boxer turned gangster once and for all. Hence, the Gangster Squad is created. Not only does this star Brolin and Gosling, Officer Coleman Harris is the first one they look for, a knife-wielding and gun-toting officer played by Anthony Mackey. Officer Common Keeler, Conway Keeler, all about the books and tactics of being a cop than carrying around a weapon. The only thing he wants is one thing, to be a hero to his son. Keeler is played with likability by Giovanni Ribisi, but the best of the group has got to be the double tandem of veteran and apprentice. Officer Max Kennard and Navidad Ramirez, Robert Patrick and Michael Pena fit the bill. Kennard is a crack shot with a six-shooter. It's like a western to him, and Ramirez just wants to be him and will prove himself in any way possible. Trust me, every member of the gangster squad gets their shining moment. The problem with the film is Will Bull's screenplay. It's having an identity crisis. It doesn't know if it's a comedy or the untouchables for our generation. At times I found myself laughing at the awful one-liners said by the cast. And when the bullets aren't flying, the drama just falls flat. Especially when they underutilize Emma Stone's Grace Faraday. Faraday is Cohen's property and girlfriend, and Sellers just wants her. So it comes a sloppy love triangle between the three that nobody cares about. O'Mara's personal life is never really explained clearly. Though, everyone does their job in this film. Great performances across the board, especially Sean Penn. His performance alone is worth the price of a ticket. He grabs the scenery, chews it, and spits it out with menace. Brolin and Gosling play off each other well, and the supporting cast, they do their job as well. The action sequences are right out of a 1940s comic book, sporting its tommy guns proudly and spraying bullets across the screen. Some hand-to-hand -hand combat and an exhilarating car chase to boot. The cinematography is pulpy, classy. It kind of looks like Zack Snyder's doing the visual effects. And the costume design is top-notch 40s. Basically, Gangster Squad saves itself from collapsing under its inspiration with cool action sequences, great performances, and capturing the 40s period nicely. Having a good time at the movies in January? Hey, now that's rare, but Gangster Squad does just enough. I give Gangster Squad a B. Did you see this movie? Comment below and let me know. I'm Jake Turner reminding you to subscribe and spend your money wisely at the cinema.